Hey buddies and woodies and welcome back to the channel. One of the biggest ways that we grow in the aquarium hobby is by making mistakes and overcoming problems. And the way that we learn is by understanding how those mistakes were made and preventing issues from happening again in the future. For someone like me who's been keeping aquariums for the past 16 years, don't worry, I've come across my fair share of issues and also made my fair share of mistakes. However, I think it's my responsibility as a content creator to go ahead and be as transparent as I possibly can and show you the mistakes that I've made. I made a mistake just about three weeks ago and it's actually related to the stocking in my five foot tank and specifically the addition of Tilly, my Jardini Saratoga and now how that's caused an onslaught of problems in this tank. Before we get into this issue though as always let's quickly acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and the people that are managing our land as well but I say enough talking and it's time that we have a look at the five foot tank. <laughs> I should probably start off by giving you a timeline as to the issues that have actually been going on in this aquarium and it started off with the addition of one fish, Tilly, my Jardini Saratoga. Now Jardini Saratoga are known to be somewhat of an aggressive fish, however this aggression is really observed in full grown specimens and especially when they're kept in confined environments. Tilly is just under a foot and she currently has a 5 foot by 2 foot by 2.1 foot tall tank that she has pretty much all to herself at this point, but this wasn't the case. When she was first introduced into this aquarium, this pretty much was a mixed community tank. Not to say that it isn't now, but it definitely had a lot more fish. Now the first week that she went in, she was incredibly shy. She wasn't taking to foods all that much and whenever I walked past the aquarium, she really didn't like it and she'd just hide up in one corner. After the first week though, especially once she started feeding, she was definitely getting a lot more boisterous and she started to chase some of the fish around occasionally. You might actually see when I'm talking that she might take a swipe at one of the fish and that's exactly what I'm talking about. And over time I noticed that some of the fish were actually getting torn fins and missing a few scales. I thought originally this was just some starting trouble, she was just getting used to the tank mates and letting everyone know that she's boss and this is quite common with pretty much a lot of fish that you add into the aquarium. However, it didn't actually end up stopping. One day I came into the 5 foot aquarium to notice one of my archer fish was missing. I have a school of 5 archer fish and when I saw that was 4, I thought that it may have potentially jumped out but after having a look all around the aquarium, I saw that wasn't the case. I thought, okay, she probably didn't eat it and I just couldn't really justify the fact that she might have been able to take down an archer fish as big as it was. But a few days later I noticed that a geophagus was missing and at that point I knew that it was definitely her predating on some of the smaller fish. So then I caught all out all of the archer fish and the geophagus and I moved them into my four foot shallow aquarium. Tilly then went actually took down the largest pink tail chelsea's that I have in this tank. Now keep in mind already she's eaten around about $75 worth of fish. She didn't eat this pink tail chelsea's but she definitely did a lot of severe damage. It was actually so graphic that I just didn't want to film it and I wanted to focus on potentially trying to revive this fish but it was missing all of the scales on its body and was pretty much too far gone to make it past the night and that's exactly what happened and at that point all the pink tail chelsea's came out of the aquarium and they went into the four foot tank. I also did have a group of five pink tail chelsea's now that is a group of four and in Australia pink tail chelsea's retail for around 200 Australian dollars. Now those were sacrifices that I was potentially willing to make because the Saratoga Giardini is a fish that that I've wanted for probably upwards of a decade. For as long as I've been keeping fish, I've had this infatuation with Saratoga Giardini and the fact that I've finally been able to keep one, I thought I just have to see the two sort of evils and pick which one I like better. However, the problem still didn't stop there and do you see how this continually keeps getting worse and worse? There is one fish in this tank that I will let no one mess with and if a fish messes with Neo, my Australian lungfish, that fish is out and Tilly did exactly that. She actually started taking swipes at Neo, especially when he would swim around in the open water column. Especially after taking a few injuries, Australian lungfish tend to heal pretty fast and that's something that I've experienced with Neo, but I didn't want to keep him in the five foot aquarium any longer. He actually is in isolation in that white tub that you see up the top. And it's also where my discus are. And whilst this seems like it's a confined space, and to be completely honest, it is, it pretty much is jail for this fish and uh, they're in a very small space, the plan isn't to keep them in there long term. And let me talk about the plans that I now have for the five foot aquarium. 
Now, as much as I hated to go ahead and make this decision, I knew that I had to take Tilly out of the five foot aquarium. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any aquarium as large as this in the fish room, because if I did, I definitely would have kept Tilly and just kept her isolated because that's how much I love Saratoga Jardinis. However, that simply isn't the case and I do need to find a new home for Tilly, which I honestly really don't wanna do. Now, by the time that you see this video, I may have already found a new home for her or I would potentially still have her, but I'm trying to get rid of her by the end of this week and uh, I'm just trying to find the suitable home for her because I still do value this fish so much and I wanna make sure she's going to the right home as well. But after I was dealing with this problem, I sort of had a look at the five foot aquarium and I thought if I'm dealing with one issue, I may as well deal with them all. And the second problem that I'm facing in this tank is just how much the salmon tail catfish are out competing near and all of the other fish in this aquarium for that matter of fact. That includes my freshwater stingrays, the geophagus that I had in this tank and all of the other bottom dwellers. Now salmon tail catfish are both a bottom and mid water dweller from what I've experienced and I really do love these fish. There are awesome, fantastic schooling catfish, always active but the issue is they eat so damn much. Now Neo and a lot of the other fish in this tank are pretty slow eaters. And by the time they've eaten one or two pieces of food, the salmon tail catfish have had an entire smorgasbord and pretty much fed probably around 50 to 70% of the amount of food that I've added into this tank. And that's something that I can't be dealing with because I am borderline overfeeding this tank and overfeeding any aquarium just isn't good in the long term for the health of the fish. So I knew that the salmon tails had to come out as well. So they are for sale. I'm not as much of a uh, in a rush as I am to get rid of the salmon tails as I am to get rid of Tilly, but both fish definitely have to go. But hey, that really is just how we grow in the aquarium hobby, isn't it? All of these trials, tribulations, and hurdles are put in place for us to see how we're meant to improve next time onwards and now I think I know generally what sort of fish will and won't work with Neo. I've trialed and experimented with a few fish over this year and I think I can apply that sort of blanket level of knowledge with a whole bunch of different species and this is where I need your help because I'm still in two minds about whether I should just get rid of all of the larger growing predator style fish in this tank and just focus on more of a mixed community where I've got some rainbow fish, some purple spotted gudgeons, a lot of those peaceful native Australian fish, or if I should go for more of a South American route where I've got some pink tail chalcius, my Oscar, geophagus, some of those more semi-aggressive to peaceful but larger growing fish. I think that both could definitely work, but I definitely want to hear what you're more interested in. And thank you so much for all of the recent support that you've been giving to my channel. We hit 2,000 subscribers and don't worry, I do have a slew of different giveaways and events that I've got planned for this channel as well and um, all of the support that you've been giving me has been absolutely amazing. Feel free to give me your feedback as to how you would have tackled this, some of the things that you may have changed and issues that you face similar to this because I think that sort of collaborative experience that we have in the comment section down below is how we can all learn together. But bodgies and widgies, that's essentially it from me. I will give you an update shortly as to how I've dealt with this, some of the stuff that's been happening and if you do want to follow that closer, feel free to follow me on Facebook, Instagram and I will have a Discord for us all to interact as a community coming out very shortly. But thank you so much for watching and as always, stay happy, stay safe, stay Australian, Bodgy and the Five Foot out.